students so last time we talked about the photosynthesis and we have done one activity wherein i told you that chlorophyll is essential for photosynthesis today we'll be talking about another activity which indicates that the carbon dioxide is essential for photosynthesis so carbon dioxide is essential for photosynthesis now this is activity 2 in this what you have to do is you have to take two plants like this is one plant and this is another plant so take two plants of almost equal size now the leaves of both these plants have the chlorophyll in it as a result they are doing photosynthesis and the excess of food material which is produced during photosynthesis that is stored as starch so the leaves of both these plants are having starch now before doing the experiment you have to de-starch it de-starch means you have to remove the starch from the leaves of these plants so how to do that if you keep these two plants in dark for three days all the starch which is present in these plants that will be consumed by the plant as a result the leaves won't be having any starch now take these two plants and keep both these plants in two separate glass plates so take two glass plates this is one glass plate this is another glass plate take both the plants keep both the plants into two glass plates now in one of the plant ek plant ke andar take a small watch glass this is a watch glass and put some koh that is potash potassium hydroxide tablets in this watch glass so in one plant put a watch glass in which koh tablets are there now the function of this koh is it absorbs the carbon dioxide from the environment so iske aas pass is plant ke aas pass jitni carbon dioxide hai that will be absorbed by this koh now after that some of the outside gas may enter inside okay but before that you cover both these plants in bell jars so like this is one bell jar this is second bell jar so it is like a shape is like a bell that is why it is they are known as a bell jar but bell is made up of a metal but these bell jars are made up of glass and the bottom is open cover both these plants with the help of bell jars okay now the possibility is there that some air might go inside from the bottom so you have to make the both the experiments air tight so how to make the air tight that is you have can make the bottom air tight with the help of a vaseline so seal the bottom with the vaseline to make them air tight after that keep both these plants in sunlight for 2 days do din ke do ghante ke liye not days do ghante ke liye inko sunlight mein rakho now what ha will happen that these plants when they are kept in sunlight sunlight the photosynthesis will take place now whether the photosynthesis has taken place in both the plants or not we have to check and how to check the presence how to check whether photosynthesis has taken place or not is with the help of the starch if the starch is present because we have already de-starched them before the experiment if the starch is present in the leaves that indicates that the photosynthesis have taken place i explained you in the last experiment how to test for the starch to repeat that i'll tell you pick one one leaf from each plant boil it in water after that boil it in alcohol last time also i told you that direct boiling of the alcohol should not be shouldn't take place shouldn't be done but alcohol should be boiled in water bath and why we boil the leaves in alcohol because chlorophyll is soluble in alcohol as a result the color of the alcohol will become green whereas the leaf become white in color after boiling the leaf in alcohol do the test for the presence of starch and which test you have to do that is iodine test so this iodine test is to check whether the starch is present in the leaf or not after doing this you have to compare the blue color in both the leaves if the leaf they 
show the blue color that means the starch is present if the blue color is not there that indicates starch is absent so if you do this experiment you will find that the leaf from this plant in which the qh that is added they will not show the presence of starch but the leaves from this plant will show the presence of starch what does it mean it means that this plant has not done the photosynthesis is plant mein photosynthesis nahi hua aur is plant mein hua hai so in dono plant mein difference kya hai only difference is that in the first that is a the koh pellet is there that koh is mein dala hua hai and the function of the koh is to absorb the carbon dioxide so yahan pe jo jitni carbon dioxide hai yahan pe iske beech mein that is taken by the koh as a result कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड नहीं है फोटोसिंथेसिस नहीं होगा सो दिस प्लांट्स विल नॉट डू द फोटोसिंथेसिस दिस इंडिकेट्स दैट फोटोसिंथेसिस कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इज असेंशियल फॉर फोटोसिंथेसिस द इनिशियल एक्सपेरिमेंट इंडिकेटेड दैट द क्लोरोफिल इज असेंशियल फॉर फोटोसिंथेसिस इन दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट और दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट प्रूफ दैट कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इज असेंशियल फॉर फोटोसिंथेसिस नाउ another thing which is essential for photosynthesis that is third thing water is also essential for photosynthesis now there are experiment to prove that water is essential for photosynthesis but that is not there in the course from where these plants will take water plants take the water from the soil okay and the sunlight that is from the sun so in addition to this photosynthesis there for a proper growth and for proper development of the plant certain other things are also required by the plants what are those things those are various other inorganic material which are known as the inorganic minerals what are those inorganic minerals like nitrogen phosphorus iron magnesium manganese sulfur etc all these are inorganic minerals like there are 13 inorganic minerals which is required by the plant for the proper growth and development the plant take all these inorganic mineral from the soil so that is how the plants grow they do the photosynthesis and the other requirement that is fulfilled from the soil that is the water requirement as well as the mineral requirement now there is a special importance of nitrogen so nitrogen is very essential for any living organism why because nitrogen is required for the synthesis of protein hamari body ke andar bhi jitni proteins hain unme nitrogen hai now this nitrogen is required for the synthesis of protein for the amino acid and many other substances other compounds are also there which required nitrogen for their synthesis in the air jo hamari bahar air hai usme 75% nitrogen hai but this nitrogen is present in a form of a gaseous nitrogen jo bahar hamare air hai us air mein because the air is a mixture of many gases so us air ke andar 78% nitrogen hai 21% oxygen hai ye shayad tumhe sabko malum hoga and a small amount of carbon dioxide is there this 78% of the nitrogen cannot be used by the living organism hum hum is nitrogen ko यूज नहीं कर सकते बट एट द सेम टाइम दिस नाइट्रोजन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द ऑर्गेनिज्म बिकॉज ऑल द प्रोटीन्स दे हैव द नाइट्रोजन इन इट देन हाउ द ऑर्गेनिज्म हाउ द डिफरेंट एनिमल्स फुलफिल देयर नाइट्रोजन रिक्वायरमेंट दिस नाइट्रोजन इज फिक्सड अप दैट मीन्स दिस नाइट्रोजन विद द हेल्प ऑफ सर्टन बैक्टीरिया इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू इन ऑर्गेनिक फॉर्म in a form of nitrates or nitrites these nitrates or nitrites they are formed inside the soil with the help of certain bacteria and the plants absorb this nitrogen in a form of nitrates and nitrites from the soil right or hum log bhi even none of the living organism can utilize this 78% of the nitrogen next with this your autotrophic type of nutrition gets over the second topic or the subsequent topic is the heterotrophic type of nutrition 
This heterotrophic type of nutrition means the organism cannot make their own food material, but they depend upon the plants or animals for their nutrition. The heterotrophic type of nutrition is of three types. One is saprophytic type of nutrition, second is holozoic type of nutrition and the third is parasitic type of nutrition. We will talk about all these three type of nutrition. I will explain you all these three type of nutrition one by one. First is the saprophytic type of nutrition, the first type that is the saprophytic type of nutrition. Now, remember in this type of a nutrition, the complex food material, they are converted into simple organic material. Jo complex organic food hai, that is get digested into simple organic substance which can be directly absorbed by the plant. So, that means to say that digestion of the food material, digestion means breaking of complex food material into simple that is known as a digestion. Digestion of the food material takes place outside the body of an organism, body ke under digestion nahi hoti. In saprophytic type of nutrition, the digestion of the food material takes place outside the body of an organism. So, such type of nutrition in which the digestion of complex food material takes place outside the body of an uh, organism and the organism absorb the digested food material that is type known as a saprophytic type of nutrition. This saprophytic type of nutrition is found in fungi, bread mold, yeast and mushroom. All these are actually the examples of the fungi and I told you this fungi is a heterotrophs. It shows heterotrophic type of nutrition because it cannot make its own food material. So, that is a saprophytic nutrition. Second type of nutrition is holozoic nutrition. In this holozoic nutrition, the digestion of the food material that means breaking of the food material which is known as a digestion that takes place inside the body, wo body ke andar hota hai, outside nahi hota hai, yahan pe outside hota hai, digestion takes place outside, yahan digestion of the food material takes place inside the body of an organism. So, that type of nutrition in which the digestion of the food material takes place inside the body of a animal that is known as a holozoic type of nutrition. The example of this type of nutrition, they are amoeba, cow, goat, dog, cat even human beings to me pata hai ki hum log khana khate hai aur uski digestion takes place inside our body in the alimentary canal. So, such type of nutrition is known as a holozoid type of nutrition. The third type of nutrition is known as a parasitic nutrition. Now, what are parasites? Parasites are certain organisms or certain animals which live inside or outside the body of other organism. Do dusre organism ki body ke bahar rehte hai ya andar rehte hai. So, the animals or small organisms which live inside or outside the body of an organism is known as parasites. These parasites that means can be of two type ectoparasite, ectoparasite means they live outside the body of an organism. Endoparasite as the name indicate endo means inner side. So, endoparasite live inside the body of a host. Host is an animal on which the parasite live. Take for example, the the and you have to remember that these organism that is the parasites they do not kill the host. Host ko wo marte nahi, kyunki unko to host ke andar rehna hai. And the example of uh, this organism is tapeworm. Tumne suna hoga bahut baar pet mein kide a jate hai. So, these are known as the tapeworm. Tapeworm is an endoparasite. Why? Because it lives inside the body of an organism. Now, similarly, there is another very common parasite which is known as a liver fluke. And liver fluke lives again inside the body of an organism. So, tapeworm and the leech, tapeworm and the liver fluke, these are the example of endoparasite. Now, leech, tumne leech ka naam bhi suna hoga, kabhi ghaas mein jao, vaha leech ho, to wo tumhare paung mein lag jati hai. So, these leech is also a parasite because they suck the blood, but this leech is not a endoparasite, it is an ectoparasite, wo body ke andar nahi jati, body ke bahar jo hai, wo stick kar jati hai. Similarly, ticks and mites, it is not mice, 
spelling mistake is there, it should be mite m i t e. So, ticks and mites these are the small parasites which live on the body of dog. So, they are also not endoparasite, but ectoparasite kyunki wo dog ke body ke upar jo hai kai bar hum nikalte hain dog agar rakha hai to kai bar unki body ke upar thode chote chote kide se ho jate hain which are known as the ectoparasite. Then all these are the examples of animals like tapeworm, leech, ticks and mites these are the animals. Now, there is a plant this plant is known as a cascata. Now, cascata is a parasitic plant. Now, this cascata is an angiosperm means it is a flowering plant, but it does not have leaves. Is me leaves nahi hote. Leaves nahi hote, toh it cannot prepare its food material. As a result, this cascata plant it live on the other plant. That means it is a parasitic plant. It is a total parasitic plant because it doesn't have leaves. So this heterotrophic type of nutrition can be saprophytic type of nutrition, can be holozoic type of nutrition, or it can be parasitic type of nutrition. Okay. Now, in detail we will be talking about nutrition in amoeba, nutrition in amoeba. Of nutrition in amoeba, amoeba does not have a definite shape, amoeba ki koi definite shape ni hoti and all of you must be knowing that amoeba is a unicellular organism. Yes, single cell ka bana hota hai. Like this is an amoeba which is a unicellular organism, iske andar there is a nucleus. Now, whenever it has to take food, like this is a food which the amoeba wants to take. So, whenever the amoeba wants to take a food, the surface of the body give small finger like processes. You can see these finger like processes. These finger like processes which are produced from the surface of the body of a amoeba, they are known as the pseudopodia. So, pseudopodia are finger like processes which are formed from the surface of the body of a amoeba. And when these finger like processes meet each other, this diagram may they see me, they meet each other and the food jo hai, pink color ka food that goes inside the body of a amoeba in a form of a vacuole, vacuole ban jata hai which is known as a food vacuole. So, ye food jo hai in the food vacuole enter inside the body of amoeba. Now, in the food vacuole the food gets digested. So, here the digestion of the food material takes place inside the body of amoeba. So, it is which type of nutrition? It is holozoic type of nutrition. After that the unabsorbed food material jo food material absorb nahi hota, the undigested unabsorbed food material that is thrown out of the body of from amoeba from the cell surface only. So, the amoeba does not have any shape like tum dekho iska shape or last wale ka shape is different. Unicellular organism like amoeba does not have any shape, but it produces certain pseudopodia such type of nutrition which take which is a holozoic type of nutrition. Why it is known as a holozoic type of nutrition? Because this type of nutrition the digestion digestion jo hai it has taken inside it has occurred inside the body of an organism. So, amoeba show which type of nutrition heterotrophic nutrition which type of heterotrophic nutrition holozoic type of a nutrition. Now, there is another organism which is unicellular that is a paramecium. Now, there is a difference between the amoeba and the paramecium. I told you that amoeba does not have any shape, but paramecium does have a shape. Deko, iski shape jo hai, wo slipper jaisi hai. So, the paramecium has a definite shape and thus on the surface of the paramecium, you can see on the surface of the paramecium small small cilia are there, small structures, small hair like structure they are known as the cilia, the cilia are present. Now, the food material cannot be taken by this paramecium from the surface. So, it has a mouth like structure, it has a mouth like structure, this is a mouth like structure which is known as an oral groove, this is a mouth like structure which is known as an oral groove. So, paramecium has to take food inside, okay. food goes inside the paramecium through this oral groove and this is a food material. Right. So, paramecium cannot take the food material from its body surface. Another thing you have to remember is the paramecium have two nucleus. This is a big nucleus which is known as a macronucleus and this is a small nucleus which is known as a micronucleus. Otherwise, 
in most of the cells the nucleus animal cell they have single nucleus. So, this is the difference between the paramecium also shows holotype holozoic type of a nutrition, amoeba also shows holozoic type of a nutrition, but I told you the difference that means the amoeba ki koi definite shape nahi hoti, but paramecium ki definite shape hoti hai clear. So, this is the difference. So, I think students we finish up this here in next lecture I will be teaching you the nutrition in human next lecture may I will be teaching you the nutrition in human that means human ka digestive system and it is very important it is very important and generally a 5 marks question is been asked in the board regarding human digestive system. So, read about the photosynthesis the two activities the how the nutrition takes place in amoeba and paramecium and in the next lecture we will be talking about the human nutrition right students. Okay, have a good day. Bye-bye.